You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Okay, it's Thursday at KubeCon, and I'm with Ari Zilka. Ari has a company called My Decisive AI. I want to get to that in a minute, but I first want to hear about yourself and your history in, in tech, because I know it goes back to the days of Hortonworks and before. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. So, I, I'm basically a data center and big data guy. I did Terracotta EH Cache first, which was the guys who created big memory and helped disrupt Oracle and get to um, in-memory data grids, which are pretty popular now. Um, then I did Hortonworks. After Hortonworks, I actually tried my hand at venture did capital. Did you start? I started Hortonworks okay. with that crew. I was the first CPO there. And I left as, uh, took it through IPO and then left as CPO, CTO. Mm -hmm. um, I, after that, I went over to Kosla Ventures okay. and was a GP there doing enterprise software investing. Really focused heavily on databases, data management and data center. So I did Imply, Citus Data, and then um, decided to go back in-house, had more fun as an entrepreneur. So New Relic and I got together and we created a group called the Incubator there and ended up building all their new, uh, new products, new lines of business were under me. And then I started My Decisive. So My Decisive fits into the observability space. Observability is a really hot topic these days. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the underlying technology for My Decisive and then perhaps we can start from there. Sure. So first and foremost, My Decisive is what we call proactive operations. It's designed to be a robot that does all your change controls for you. Uh, why that? Because I had too many customers asking me, can you really reduce MTTR when I was at New Relic? And the honest answer was nobody was reducing MTTR. It's not a dig on New Relic, nobody was reducing MTTR significantly. And that's because by the time you're broken, it's too late. What you want to do is make sure that the humans aren't in the loop making the changes and that you make every production change staring at your telemetry while you make the change. Who better to stare at telemetry and make a change than an AI, right? Everyone wants an AI observability tool, but what all the vendors here, I counted, there's 23 at this show, what they're all showing you is a dashboard that has a magical red uh, piece of text on it. Like, that's the broken thing. It isn't the broken thing except in contrived use cases, Alex. What really is easier to do is say, that is a broken change, roll it back. Or that is a healthy change, roll forward. Keep making the changes, add it to more nodes. It's really easy in a modern cloud native environment to roll forward, roll back. But observability has set up things where humans make that decision when staring at graphs. Is that really what you see people doing in, in, in these companies? It's just they're staring at screens all day long? Yeah. Or they're asking the system to page them to come back and look at a screen. That's the state of the art, is come back, look at me. And I don't want to do that. And I haven't found a customer who's happy with that. And thanks to my general manager role at my most recent job, I spoke to 20, 30 CIOs in a two quarter cycle, every single quarter, every single year for five and a half years. They all asked for reduce MTTR. Oh, by the way, you guys are way too expensive. Can you cut the cost? So my decisive went ahead and did that. Lower cost of ownership uh, and reduce the incidents. So what's the underlying technology for my decisive then? Well, that's why we're here at KubeCon. It's open telemetry inside. It's Kubernetes. It's Prometheus. It's NATS. Um, it's HA proxy. So it is exactly the same application footprint that your own apps are. And I had to make it that way because it runs on prem. You run it. We don't run it. It's open source. You don't even pay us. So you put this service on the wire, so to speak. 
and you told me that it's hotel as a service for on-prem. Right. Remind me about hotel and how it is being used now. Great question. Hotel stands for open telemetry, and what people do with it is twofold. They do what I, because I'm from Hortonworks, so they run it on the wire as an ETL box. Let me transform my data before it makes it into an observability vendor. They also use it in place of legacy language agents inside applications to grab all the telemetry in the first place. In the hotel community, we call that agent mode or gateway mode. Um, we have taken the gateway mode version of open telemetry and turned it into an enterprise hardened easy button for total control over the signals, the data itself, you could decide what's going where. It is all native hotel, but you'd only have to do as much hotel as you want. You could treat it like a black box, just talk to us and say, stop sending 90% of my data to, to Datadog in natural language if you want to. Later you could say, oh, I want to write this very detailed if this then that logic on the wire in my system that says, if I release and the error rate doubles, roll me back. All of that is one solution, one vendor, one technology, and 100% open. Okay. Uh, and I asked you earlier about the observability uh, user who you're addressing, and you said the platform, the platform engineer or the DevOps engineer in particular, right. Tell me about their roles now and how you see the, those roles evolving mm -hmm. and, and, and why you know the existing telemetry tools are not as relevant to them. Great, um, let me tell you a story. I, I was working with a very large streaming media outlet. They have 10,000 instances of hotel today. But if you go backwards to 2023, they had New Relic and Datadog. I was talking to the platform engineering team and they said, we want more control. What can New Relic do? What can Datadog do better? And I was one of those two vendors and I said to them, hey, you know what? Let's put Otel in the middle. The kind of control you want should be done by Otel. And they said, well, can I send all my Datadog data and my New Relic data to one vendor through Otel, and the answer is yes, you can. Unfortunately for them, they went off and built an Otel practice and community internally. So they have like 40, 50 people running their Otel stack, and it is their platform engineering team. Um, but the punchline here, Alex, is that with New Relic and Datadog, all they were doing is managing a vendor contract. They were begging teams please use these observability tools, they will help you. The teams were saying, okay, I might might not use it. But now with OpenTelemetry, they're in a two-way conversation. They're on the same side of the table instead of ops versus dev. How come? Because Otel requires so much setup, programming, and maintenance that can only be done in the application code. I've gotten rid of that complexity in Otel with my decisive so that a platform team can pick it, can leave the developers somewhat oblivious to it and get all the benefits of open source, open telemetry at the same time. But everywhere I go that has open telemetry without my decisive, you have 20, 30 person teams. If the company is a multi-billion dollar company, if it's a hundred million dollar company, it's got two or three Otel experts. But Otel is being babysat by platform engineering teams. They love it because now they have a piece of software to program, code, and own, but they hate it because they are in locking arm in arm with dev to get it right. And I've decoupled it back to a platform selection, back to a platform team decision, uh, but with all the power of open telemetry. So how are you making it copacetic, so to speak, between the operator and the developer? Well, step one in my decisive is keep your current agent. If a platform engineering team picks open source, open telemetry without the My Decisive wrapper around it, they've got to slowly migrate their way away from the vendor. With me, keep the vendor in place. Um, you don't have to ask the devs to do anything, so it becomes an autonomous decision. Uh, secondly, we are giving 
the OTEL team uh, a more powerful interface to open telemetry that is programmable and easy to live with. They don't have to worry about scale. They don't have to worry about production footprint. They instead worry about logical behaviors, runtime behaviors, automation opportunities like, hey, I want to do a release. And if the release hurts the system, roll it back. They can automate that in my system. And so that makes it copacetic to your question because developers get more power. Whereas Otel adds more toil, my decisive adds power without the toil. And you provide that, you provide, at ha and maybe you could just sum up in a sentence or two how you eliminate that toil then. Sure. Um, in one sentence, the system is built so that it can figure out and optimize itself. And so whereas open telemetry out of the box requires you to get the right data set up, the right pipelines to find, we could just inspect the data that you originally were sending to Datadog. You mentioned we're a bump in the wire. That's exactly correct. Just drop us in like a network device, and then we start snooping the data, and we start suggesting, hey, can I filter this data for you? Humans don't have to put in an hotel filtering pipeline. And then when you filter the data, you can come to me and say, hey, I am in an incident. Stop filtering the data. I need full fidelity in Datadog or Splunk so I can debug it. You push a button in my system to stop it from filtering. It, without me, you have to go to OpenTelemetry, change code, and re-release your platform so that it stops filtering. So we've moved from OpenTelemetry as a science project to OpenTelemetry as an enterprise hardened service. How have you done this? So what is that learning behavior that you've built? It's, um, what we've done is we realize that what you need is an if this then that interface to OpenTelemetry. Open telemetry, you declare, I want to filter Datadog. I want to reroute New Relic. I want to scrub PII data from Splunk. And then you hire a hotel developer and they write that pipeline for you and then they call the app teams and make sure it's not breaking the telemetry. With my decisive, it discovers things on its own, but it's all built on this fundamental construct of if this, then that. So it's got the right hooks, the right interface where a human doesn't have to join the loop. I think five years ago, before modern AI, we talked about human in the loop a lot. I don't want a human in the loop. They told me they don't want to be in the loop. They don't want to look at a dashboard. The last thing I'm going to do is move their eyeball from a dashboard to an open telemetry server. So I had to run myself. If I build an if this, then that, it's very easy for humans to explain to themselves what actions I'm going to take under what conditions. I get it. And so the service is free because it's an open source project, right? Yeah. And CNCF next week. What? It'll be in CNCF next week. Will it be a sandbox there? No, we're going to keep the code. We'll just be in the community. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so is it, what, what's the license it runs under? It's permissive GPL based license. Permissive GPL based license. Yes. Yeah. So what does that restrict the user from doing? Um, it restrict, what we require is if you build an enterprise software product, if you're Datadog or New Relic, and you decide to use My Decisive, you got to say powered by My Decisive. Okay. But for end user companies, it's unrestricted. So when you come down to it though, what is, does a customer pay for a uh, value added service that you provide? There's no value add, there's no So what is your model then? Subscription, for uh, support. Support. Yeah, we've, we've regressed 10 years, and while the best open source teams have a open slash you know, commercial add-on like you're suggesting, yeah. we're not there yet. We're just asking for support from anyone who feels they need it. Okay, so you'll provide that with technical help? Yeah. Okay, um, great. So I guess one my, my last question is about the state of observability at different layers of the stack. So when like a company might use My Decisive, can they apply it to all layers of their stack? Absolutely. Okay. We have teams who are using Conviva because it has the best in class streaming media tools. We have teams who are using Honeycomb for distributed tracing. We have teams that are using CloudWatch on AWS raw to just watch the infrastructure, watch their lambdas, et cetera. 
and trying not to pay an observability vendor at all, those are all the layers of the stack, from the infrastructure all the way up to the user or client application. Otel has, you know, Is more that... power to it. It has it has woven its way into the entire stack. Right. And so we get that free on board. We uh, are so now with supporting the, So the with the scale stack. of of Otel, mm -hmm. it provides an opportunity, a window for your service, really. Yeah. Because then you can put o can you put your service on the wire, yeah. and wherever Otel is, yeah. the, the, you know, your service is looking at what yeah. it's doing. And then it says there's problems over here yeah. with the new relic data, or exactly. the data log data, yeah. or the honeycomb data. Or, or the Peacock player, yeah. or the Netflix player, okay. or the Disney Plus player, all the way in someone's house. Ah, right. right, and the most important part is that enterprise scale I keep emphasizing, enterprise class solution, you can control it from a single control point. So if you've got a million instances of open telemetry, my decisive makes them feel like one centralized enterprise instance. Okay, and what about then the, 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 you know, the emergence of like a genic AI and more sophisticated, you know, intelligence that's being built into cloud native technologies. Yep. Since you're on the wire, you can filter that data too? Yep. Okay, great. Well, I think I've got it covered a little bit, but thank mm -hmm. you very much, Ari, for taking some time to talk. Absolutely, thank you for your time. I'm great to, it's great to be able to talk to you again after all these years. Yeah. I feel good we're doing something interesting. It's great to be able to reach the Kubernetes and open telemetry community and just happy to be here. Great, thanks a lot. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.